Hello everyone, in this video we are doing an overview of VPC endpoints. We're going to talk about what they are, why they are useful from a networking perspective, and then at the end I'll show you a demonstration of creating a VPC endpoint and interacting with it from a Lambda function that's located within a private subnet. So that's the agenda for this video, let's jump into it. And the way I'd like to explain the utility of VPC endpoints is by first talking about the problem that VPC endpoints attempt to solve. And so let's assume for a moment that we have a VPC and we have two subnets. We have a public subnet and a private subnet. And then within our private subnet, we have an EC2 instance. And our goal is to make it so that our EC2 instance has the ability to speak to Amazon S3 or any other AWS service that exists uh, in the AWS cloud. So by default, it is not going to have the ability to do that because it's in a private subnet and you're not allowed outbound internet traffic if you're in a private subnet. So what folks would typically do in order to make this work using kind of a naive approach without VPC endpoints is the first thing you do is you'd create something called a NAT gateway and NAT stands for network address translation. And then from there, we'd have our internet gateway, which is just a default component that comes with our VPC. And once we have these three components set up, we would wire them all together. So our EC2 instance, whenever it tries to make calls to the internet, that traffic would flow through the NAT gateway and onto the internet gateway. And then from there, the traffic would be forwarded out to the public internet. And here's the key, the traffic would exit the AWS cloud. So that traffic that is destined for S3 would exit the AWS cloud into the public internet before finally being able to interact with the Amazon S3 service. And then once it does, all that information is gonna be returned following the same path that we just took back to the EC2 instance. So this is how you would typically solve this problem from a networking perspective if you have a private subnet and you're trying to talk to a service like Amazon S3. And so what are the issues with this approach? Well, there's two important ones and maybe a third if you like to nickel and dime. Uh, but the first one is in terms of cost. NAT gateways do cost a pretty penny to set up and maintain. You're charged by the hour as well. So these can eat into your expenditure and they're kind of not really a component you want to have to have unless unless you really need it. The second one is in terms of security. So in this case, the traffic is leaving your VPC, it's also leaving the AWS cloud, and then it's coming all the way back in. Uh, so not ideal from a security perspective, there could be some vulnerabilities or loopholes that hackers can attempt to exploit. And the third, arguably, maybe this one is a concern to you, maybe it's not, is that a NAT gateway is just an additional point of failure. Although this is a managed piece of infrastructure from AWS and the likelihood of it going down are slim to none, it can't be ignored that if a NAT gateway breaks or goes down or there's some kind of hardware failure, then you're going to have some intermittent outage in your connection. So this is the problem that VPC endpoints attempt to solve. Let's take a look now and see how we would do this using VPC endpoints and how much simpler it is. Okay, so same diagram, we just made some extra real estate to demonstrate some concepts here. So the first thing that you'll note is that we do not need to speak to the public internet. And so the first thing we would need to do setting this up is that we would need to create a VPC endpoint and then VPC endpoints are kind of mapped to a particular AWS service. So if you want to talk to different AWS services, then you need to create separate VPC endpoints. So in our case, we would wire this up to S3 in this example, since that's the service we want to speak to. And then from there, it's not completely over yet. There's one small little thing that we need to do. Uh, we need to take care of what are called security groups. When you create a VPC endpoint, it has a security group that you need to associate with it. There's also a security group that's associated with your EC2 instance. And you can think of these as rules for your pieces of infrastructure that help govern the networking traffic on those particular instances of infrastructure. So we have two security groups in this case, one for our endpoint and one for our Lambda to function. So to set this up correctly, we kind of need to um, set up some mutual rules between these security groups. So we would need to say from the VPC endpoint perspective, allow inbound traffic from the EC2 security group. And then from the EC2 security group perspective, allow outbound traffic to the VPC endpoint security group. So only after you do that will you be able to establish network connectivity from your EC2 instance to your S3 service. And that's all you really need to do to set up connectivity to a supported AWS service. And so as you can tell, this solution is a lot simpler, a lot more secure as well. Your traffic is staying within the AWS cloud, no longer leaving the public internet via your internet gateway. You also 
also do not need a NAT gateway in this instance since it serves you no good and you're not relying on it to call out to the public internet. So overall, a whole bunch of goodness by using VPC endpoints. Uh, one small thing that you should know about as well is that with VPC endpoints, you do need to enable DNS host resolution. That's a setting on your VPC. Uh, if you go to the console, just go to edit VPC. Uh, there's two options in terms of DNS resolution that you need to allow or else this solution will not work. All right, now that we understand how VPC endpoints work, let's head over into the AWS console and I'll show you how to set one up using step functions as our destination service that we want to talk to. And then instead of using EC2, we're going to use a Lambda function. So I'll see you over there in a moment. All right, folks, so here we are in the AWS console. Now, just a couple of prerequisites for this video in order to follow along. You need a VPC that has a private subnet. I'm gonna be using the default VPC in this video, but I do have another video where I show you how to create a VPC with a public and private subnet. Um, so if you need to set that up, go ahead and watch that. Before you watch this section, things will make a lot more sense. Uh, okay, so let me just show you what we have here really quick. Uh, so first of all, we have a VPC here. If we go into your VPCs. So this is my default AWS VPC. And if you go into the resource map here and you go to subnets, you can see that I have a private subnet here. And this private subnet is configured to have a custom route table called private demo RT. You can see that it does not have internet connection to this internet gateway. Basically everything stops at this route table and the rules in this route table are pretty straightforward. I'm just going to open this really quick. Uh, it's just for local traffic. So everything within my local network will be allowed using this default route table. All right, so what we need to take care of first is we need to create those security groups, the ones that are going to be attached to our VPC endpoint and the one that is going to be attached to our Lambda function. And the reason we want to do that first is because if we try to go and create our VPC endpoint first, it's going to ask us for a security group and we don't have that yet. Uh, and it's going to cause us some headaches if we try to come back to this later and edit it. And the same thing for our Lambda function. When you create a Lambda function within a private subnet in a VPC, it's going to ask you for your security group right out of the box. So if you don't have that, you're kind of out of luck. Um, so let's go into the security section over here and then we're going to click on security groups. And so we're going to create two security groups. So let's go ahead and click on create security group and we're going to call this uh, security group name. So VPC endpoint dash demo and then uh, description. We can just copy paste this if we want. Um, and then for inbound rules. So this is the inbound rules for our VPC endpoint. Now, the interesting thing is that we don't have the security group as of yet for our Lambda function. So this isn't going to work yet, right? We haven't created the security group for our Lambda function quite yet, and that's gonna come later. So instead, what I just wanna do is create these two security groups as placeholders. Then once we create all the infrastructure, we'll add all the rules. And I wanna show you how this works when we don't have the security group set up correctly as well, you'll see that we get a timeout exception when we're working with our Lambda. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So uh, we're going to actually delete this rule for outbound rules, just get rid of everything so we have a clean slate. Going to go to create security group. Okay, that got created. Let's create another one going back to security groups and create security group. Let's call this Lambda dash VPC endpoint demo and copy this as well. And similarly, let's get rid of everything here. So these are completely blank security groups now. Okay, so we have those two things set up. That's perfect. Now what we can do is we can go ahead. Well, you can do two things. You can go create your Lambda function first, or you can create your endpoint first, whichever you prefer. I'm going to create the endpoint first and then create the Lambda function. And then we're going to mess with the security groups to make it all work. All right, so let's go to endpoints. Is it endpoints or endpoint services? Um, yeah, it's just endpoints actually. And then we're going to go to create endpoint in the top right here. So we're going to click on that. Uh, we're going to call this the step function uh, VPC dash endpoints. And like you can see here, like select the service category, we're going to use AWS services. There's a whole bunch of AWS services here. There's over 23 pages, each have about like 10 or so. So like 230 or so service or right here, 221 services that are supported. Um, the thing that is a little bit confusing is that the names aren't always that clear. So like we're searching for step functions and there's no step functions here. And this kind of took a little while for me to figure out. But what you need to search for in the step functions case is 
like the the name is is kind of weird. It's this. So you type in states and it's you know com.amazon.aws.us East one uh, dot states. And if you want to call synchronous step functions, it's a different endpoint if you're using express workflows. And so that requires setting up a different VPC endpoint. So this is the one that uh, we're going to need here, this top one. So just for normal states, so we're going to click on that. Make sure you click on the little uh, radio box here to specify it. Then it's asking us which VPC do you want this to be applicable for? This is our VPC, our default one. Um, you can mess with the additional settings if you want. Uh, we're going to leave this as default on for DNS name. And then you need to select the subnet that you want to place it in or the availability zone of that subnet. And so we're going to select uh, US East 1A for availability zone and select our private subnet here. And so IP address type, you can need to select one here. It currently supports V4, so we'll select that. And then for security groups, this is where you need to put in the VPC endpoint security group that we just created. So oh, that's not going to work. What did I call it? VPC dash and I, I hope. Um, oh boy, which one was it? Oh, it was this one, uh, VPC endpoint demo. You can see I was doing some experimentation earlier. Oh, this is the one that we created for the Lambda. So we'll come back to this later. Anyway, select the uh, security group that we just created. And then we are going to go down and click on create endpoint. So what that basically did is that it created a VPC endpoint and then assigned a security group to it. So if you select this now and you scroll to the right, um, you should see security groups. Okay, they don't have it here. They should have it down low. Yeah, um, right here under security groups. Wow, the UI is terrible here. Yeah, so here's the security group that we just created and we assigned it to this VPC endpoint. And as you can see, it is currently in pending mode. So we're just gonna wait a moment or so for this to uh, complete. And then we're gonna move on to creating the Lambda function in that private subnet. Okay, after a couple of minutes of diligent refreshing, we can see now that it is currently available, so we can move on. Uh, so let's go to our other tab here, and we are going to create our Lambda function in our private subnet. Uh, so we're in the Lambda section of the console. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click on create function in the top right here. Uh, we're gonna give this function a name. Let's call this step function VPC uh, endpoint demo. And we're gonna be using uh, Python 3.10 here. Architecture doesn't matter, permissions don't matter. Um, and you don't even need to set up the IAM rule to have step functions permissions in this specific case, since it's not gonna be required to illustrate our network connectivity example. Although you can set that up if you really want to, but we don't need to in this case. Uh, make sure you go to advanced settings and you enable VPC here. And now we need to select our VPC. And then we need to select the subnet, which is the private subnet, which is this one here, which I labeled private subnet. That's asking us to choose two. We're gonna ignore that, although in production I probably would. And then for security groups, we are going to filter down to our VPC endpoint security group. Yeah, so this was the one we created for it. So Lambda VPC endpoint demo. So hopefully this illustrates what I mean. If we didn't create these security groups in advance, we wouldn't be able to select anything here and it would kind of be a bit of a problem. Um, so that's all we need to do. And you can actually just see, we have no rules for this uh, security group, which is perfect, it's desirable. Um, so let's go ahead now and click on create function. Now, because we are creating a function in a private VPC, this does take a little bit longer than normal to create your Lambda function. So I will fast forward this when it's done and we will move on to the next step. All right, so after a while, we finally see we successfully created this function. Um, so let's go and test out right now. Let's try to call the step function service and see what happens. And uh, should be no surprise here. So I'm just gonna paste in some code. Um, if we just take a look at this really quick, we're kind of making a client here for the step functions, um, Boto3 client. Uh, and then we're calling the start execution API. You can put in your ARN here and your, your name and your input if you want, uh, but we don't need that to demonstrate this. Uh, so let's just deploy this really quick and then try to create a test event and test this this out, I'm gonna click on save, um, and we're gonna click on test now. And you'll see one seconds, two seconds, three seconds, and error message. Task timed out after three seconds. You can change the timeout to whatever number you want, but this will never work because we're not allowing the correct um, connectivity based on the security groups of our VPC endpoint and of our Lambda function. So that's what we need to correct in order to make this work. So let's go and do that now. And in order to do that, we're gonna just open up a separate tab here, and then we're gonna go back into security groups and we are going to modify those security groups that we just created. So I think it was these two. So VPC endpoint demo uh, or Lambda and then VPC um, this UI, man, I swear. 
Okay, so here are the two. So this is the one for the endpoint. So let's go ahead and modify this one first. Um, so what we need to do for this endpoint is that we need to allow inbound rules for all traffic from our Lambda security group. Um, so let's go and change that. So we're gonna go to inbound rules and then we're going to edit inbound rules and we're gonna add a rule and we're gonna say all traffic, all traffic and for the, the source, you're gonna put custom here and then just click on here. And then we're gonna find the name of our Lambda VPC security group, which is currently attached to it. So it's this one here, Lambda VPC endpoint uh, SG. Uh, so we're gonna click on this, go ahead and click on save rules. And so now it has the correct permissions. Let's do the opposite now for our Lambda security group. So this is the one right here. Gonna click on this and this one needs outbound access to the VPC endpoint security group. So we're gonna to go to outbound rules. We are going to edit outbound rules and similar story, we're gonna do all traffic, all traffic. And then we are going to select uh, the VPC endpoints, which is this one. This is the uh, security group for the VPC endpoint uh, that we just created in the earlier sections of the video. Okay, so that's all we need to do now. Let's go ahead and click on save rules and that's good. So that setup is done. Let's go back to our step function, go back to our code. I just wanna make a small change here and redeploy because sometimes if you don't do that right away, it doesn't pick up the new changes. So we're just gonna do that. And then now if we test this out, remember last time we got a timeout after three seconds, we're probably gonna get an error here because the ARN doesn't exist. And there you go. So an error occurred in valid ARN when calling the start execution operation. That errored out, but at least the network connectivity is working so that you know we got everything right. So if you enjoyed this video, please check out the other ones on my channel and please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.